Hello, you're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. We find ourselves here in Arizona filming the new BMW M2, which, as great as it is, is bloody heavy. And we've realized that over the years, we are constantly complaining about cars getting fatter and fatter and fatter. And we thought that what we needed was maybe a bit of a break, a bit of a palate cleanser. Yeah, so we've purchased two lightweight cars of a questionable nature, and we've shipped them here. And we're gonna take them on a thousand mile journey across the desert to seek enlightenment. Oh, okay, enlightenment, because we're like, we're gonna get enlightened, yep. and then the cars are light. Yeah, we talked about this. Yeah, but that, no, that double meaning, it's, it's cool, it's cool. On the morning of the first day of our trip, James and I turned our focus to the journey ahead. Our team had arranged for the cars we'd purchased sight unseen to be dropped off in the parking lot of the hotel we were staying at here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And truth be told, this was the first time we were seeing the cars together, or in James's case, it was his first time seeing his anime homage special in real life, period. This is it? I've never seen this before. <laughs> You've never seen it in person. You've never even heard it start. No. Safe Auto literally just delivered it. We weren't even here for it. And no. they dropped out. They drove through the night like a couple of legends and uh, delivered these cars to Scottsdale. They look great. What do you think? Oh, schnitz. Yeah. Did, did you, you do it? Oh, yeah, of course I did. <laughs> okay, you kind of. It's yeah. Tofu. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. Don't mess with me. I know tofu. <laughs> okay. I couldn't find. I couldn't find the tofu was taken. <laughs> and I Clearly. wasn't I wasn't leaving without a custom plate. What do you think? This looks so fantastic. Isn't it? This is a Mark II? No, this is a Mark I. Mark, 1984 though. Yes, yes. So that was that was the final year, right? Uh, okay. So they, everyone thinks that this is a uh, a Mark II because it has square headlights. All right. We'll, we'll cover all this later, but this is a Mark I. This is actually an American car built in Westmoreland, Pennsylvania. This is the original hot hatch. Golf the GTI. Rabbit GTI. Yeah. Well, they're no rabbit. It's a rabbit here, right? It's, a rabbit. it's golf at where you're from. Well, feast your eyes on the AE86 Toyota Corolla. Sprinter Trino. Yeah. This is the car. You went with the full livery, eh? The initial D livery, yeah. Yep. Why not? This car is famous because of that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks honestly fantastic, seriously. Where did you find yours? Uh... Auto Tempest. <laughs> we, we both found them on Auto Tempest. As you saw at the beginning, Auto Tempest has supported this video, which is amazing. They're quite good, as it turns out, at supporting long road trip adventures of people buying silly cars. Yeah, and it's it, it kind of works for us because it's a catch-all. So like, they help you search the other sites. So Facebook Marketplace, Carvana, True Car, Kijiji, even the auction sites, like it just puts them all in one place. Easy searching. But so where was yours actually This on? was on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, so right. mine was on the Canadian version of Craigslist, Kijiji. Right, yeah. okay. What did you pay for yours? $16,000, Canadian. Sixteen? Sixteen thousand dollars $16,000. Did you pay for yours? Uh, this, somehow actually the same. <laughs> this was 16000 really? Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, that's amazing. So these are, both, these are both 16 grand, they're both hatchbacks, they're both from the 80s. Rear wheel drive, front wheel drive, manual transmissions, and very, very light. What did you search for yours? You, what slow I, front wheel drive? No, I, no, I searched for, you know, I'm filtered by transmission and, and, and front wheel drive. I, want, I wanted this, I wanted this exact car and I got it. Right. What did you search for? I want to live out an anime fantasy? Uh, you know what, no, I take offense to that because first of all, this took weeks to find, weeks to find. Uh, I searched. He's the, probably been waiting on that joke. I for searched a the entire, <laughs> entire <laughs> no, hemisphere. No, you can't even say that. These are not easy to find. Um, anyway, this is extremely exciting, and I'm itching to go. Can we, can, can we set off on our thousand mile adventure now? Yeah, I think it's time for the adventures of Tofu and Schnitz to begin. Oh, I love that. Yeah, Tofu and Schnitz. Let's do it. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, we got ready to leave Scottsdale, optimistic in our new old car's ability to cover some serious miles. 
We were prepared for the journey to be shaped by the road, but we did know that after starting down here in Scottsdale, we wanted to head north into the mountains to experience some beautiful roads and epic scenery, where we hoped to catch the sunset at the legendary Cathedral Rock tonight. Then we knew we wanted to head west into the desert, where hopefully we were treated to some canyon views and interesting Americana. Then finally, after days of driving, we were planning to end somewhere far south in California, where we would find ourselves enlightened and the heavy weight of modern cars removed from our shoulders. But first we had to get there, and little did we know that that meant traversing some very challenging terrain in two high mileage 80s icons with no airbags, no knowledgeable guides, and just a small camera crew of four dedicated team members. Welcome to the first Throttle House adventure. But before any of that happened, and before we even set off, I had something I needed to get off of my chest. <sighs> okay, kill switch, because the mechanic says that this uh, drains its battery. Here we go, first ever startup. And it starts, and so does the adventure. On a bit of a lie, I, I had to lie to Thomas um, because I said these were sought after. I couldn't find one of these for 16 grand. Uh, I couldn't find one of these for close to 16 grand. This car, before taxes and the money we had to put into it, uh, cost $36,000 Canadian. Uh, so, um, hey. <laughs> yeah, but come on. So, initial D, I could deliver tofu in this. This is, I mean, it's so cool. Have you seen Initial D? It's not just a popular anime, it's one of the most famous car stories ever. In Japan, this little rear wheel drive Toyota AE86 Sprinter Torino spawned an entire generation of drifters and literally created a whole car culture globally. Which is why I had my car done up in the same livery as the car that Takumi Fujiwara used to conquer Mount Akina on his morning tofu delivery runs. And yes, our main mission is to bring driving back to simplicity and purity. And so technically, me living out an anime fantasy doesn't quite count. But that's okay, because the excitement of what was about to happen set in pretty much in the first 30 meters of Arizona tarmac. <laughs> Tom is having a good time. I'm so stoked right now. Oh my god. Oh shh. After spending so much time lately in new cars, it was immediately refreshing to be in machines that were so classic feeling. Alright, this is a piece of history. This is important. Right away though, I'm noticing quite a few issues. You know, there's a lot of buzz around the A6. This particular A6, there's a lot of buzz in it. It is already incredibly loud in here. NVH, noise, vibrations and harshness. Yeah, it's got that. Immediately, there's a lot of rattle. But I mean, when it comes to back to basics, lightweight, classic, like original, reliable cars. What more can you ask for than a Toyota Corolla? This is it. James was clearly proud of his Toyota already, considering that neither of us had driven our cars before this. We bought them remotely and had them dropped off at our friends Clarkson Fine Cars back in Ontario. And my GTI arrived to them a bit rough around the edges with a wonky idle over 200,000 kilometers on the clock and in desperate need of fresh fluids. But otherwise, the car was fine. So they fixed the issues and did a tune-up. And honestly, they went above and beyond to prep the cars for us. So right away, from where I was sitting, this was feeling like just about the best 16 grand I had ever spent on a car. This is the Rabbit GTI. This is the original hot hatchback. 
And I know this only has 90 horsepower, which is less than the Euro GTI, but I did a little bit of research, and as it turns out, that wasn't because of any sort of emissions thing or neutering because of American laws. That was a choice that they made. They intentionally gave this that power because they shifted the power band. So this has a bit more of a punchy mid-range instead of a peaky top end. So when I put my foot down, even in third gear there at 3,000 RPM, it just shoves you. The car feels light. The engine feels snappy. And I know in terms of reliability and endurance, I am going up against a Toyota, and that's a bit of an issue. And to be honest, when these originally came out, there were some reliability concerns about them. There's some articles saying that the Rabbit, you know, wasn't good for a lot of mileage. And as I said, this has a lot of mileage, so hopefully it makes it through. This is gonna be one hell of an adventure. And you know what? If these little hatchbacks can get through a thousand mile journey and prove a point, that wouldn't be the first time that ultralight hatchbacks have saved the day. Back in the 1970s, a, we'll call it a kerfuffle in the Middle East, meant that there was a serious shortage of oil, and gigantic American land yachts with six or even eight liter V8s all of a sudden became quite unaffordable at the pumps. So smaller, more efficient cars, like the hatchbacks that were already popular in Europe and Japan with their smaller streets and different rules, became the saviors of the people in North America. And they were so popular, in fact, that when oil prices stabilized, hotter versions of these cars started coming out and people kept buying them. And after only a few moments on a highway in ours, it was easy to see why. Hey James, what are you doing back there? The wind mirror is shaking so much, I, I can't even see to, uh, to merge, but I'm coming back to you, hold on. This is why my car is pretty comfy. How about yours? Yeah, you know, it's like, it's loud, and also, I'm curious, how fast does your car say you're going right now? It says about 90 kilometers an hour. What does yours say? 130. I don't think either of our speedos are right. I tell you what though, these two look good together. All right, everyone on the highway is going faster than me and now I'm going 135 kilometers an hour apparently. So I feel like an insane person. I'm gonna see if I can reduce the drag because I have pop-up headlights. Thomas doesn't have pop-up headlights. So if I turn off my lights, Streamline! This, uh, this feels pretty comfy. I'm not having a bad time at all in this. It tracks straight on the highway. This is the German part, right? It's got that Autobahn blood. Right now, other than the, if I'm honest, egregious amount of road noise and things rattling and making noises, this is not any less comfortable than a modern car. Genuinely, right now, cruising on this highway with broken pavement, seat is good, visibility is good, ride is fine, even though this is, as it turns out, on coilovers, but they're good coilovers. I'm actually shocked at how good the highway manners are from a steering perspective, because on center, just there's just enough leeway that it's not twitchy, but there's not a huge dead zone at all. If I do this, I move, I turn. It feels shockingly accurate. Oftentimes, old cars, there's nothing between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. It's just loose. This just feels very, very tight. Seats are comfortable. Visibility is good. It's just very much the noise, you know. Maybe tinnitus was all the rage back then. Highway manners assessed, we decided to leave Arizona's Autobahn, but this led Thomas's 80s proud German hatchback to protest. Mine's making a really strong smell right now, and I'm just noticing this. What was that? Ooh, that's a, that's a strong smell. Whew, okay. 
Temperatures are fine, pressure's fine. Yeah, the reason is, Thomas, what's happened is you've not bought a Corolla, you've bought a German car that's 40 years old. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm getting that. It's really strong. I, it, I can't tell if it's, it's not brakes. It's a fluid of some kind, but my temperatures are fine. I kind of want to figure out the smell. The smell? There's a strong smell, but Mine's I- Mine's making no smell. No smell, good, can I pee? What? Oh my God. What, this is an ankle breaking situation here. Oh, that is a smell. That is a no, smell. No. Thomas, it does smell. No, I know. Can you pop the hood? Yeah, put it in the most dangerous place. I stopped on a really amazing spot to do inspections on. You did. If we were cattle, we would be in trouble. <laughs> is that what this is for? Okay. I thought you were the man. Am I supposed to know? Why would I know that? Why would the cattle not just... Oh, there's fences. Makes sense. All right, let's hope you know this more than you know farms. <laughs> that doesn't look too bad. There's nothing, that doesn't nothing look... immediately wrong looking. No, okay. What's that supposed to be plugged into? <laughs> Uh, I think that's an HDMI. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Okay, I really cannot... Oh, oh, wait a second. Am I... The smell is plastic. It's melting. Your fan's melting. Why is my fan melting? Like the... It looks like it's like been rubbing on the outside or something. Is that what fan death is? <laughs> what? The mystical fan death? What are you talking about right now? <laughs> Um, no, that's not supposed to be like that. That, well, it, that is, that's what the smell was. It was like plastic. I was like, why can't I put my finger on it? It's not a car smell. Technically, it's a self-fixing issue. It, yeah, it will just inevitably it, become... Once it melts down enough... Yeah. Okay, that's it, not a it problem. Won't, it won't be close enough to the heat. I'm not worried about that. Oh, no, wait a second. Actually, actually, that has been cut. But the... Mm. I do see some red on the fan there. But there's no, but there's, how does that possibly, that doesn't make any sense, but. No, because that's not reaching at all. No, it's but that's not. That's been cut and these are red. I'm just saying. I'm just gonna tape that up. I'm just gonna tape that up in case. Yeah. But that is worrisome. Yeah. Okay. Onward. We managed to get on the road for about five minutes before it was James's turn to show us that his car was almost 40 years old. Uh, my car is entering a strange rhythm. Okay, that was weird. Uh, I've lost power. I've lost power. Uh oh. oh we barely even started. Just uh, take a little sip. I know what I need, I don't know what this car needs. I don't know much about the 4AGEE. -E. James. <laughs> no. That, what? That's a beam, what do you mean what? That's a beams engine. Yes, it's a beams engine. Oh my God, what the hell? I didn't. I don't know anything about the beams. Oh, well I can tell you a lot about it. That's the fancy marketing name for the 3SGE, pulled from the Toyota Altezza in the early 2000s. Importantly, the stock engine makes 112 horsepower. Yes, how much is this making? 197. <laughs> but not this right now, it's not. This, so this has like an insane power to weight ratio. Well, yeah, because this also has uh, headers and an intake. And so, yeah, kind of got the power to weight ratio of a base 911. Like um, from the era? No, from modern day. <laughs> Oh my god, okay, well, it does. Doesn't it look cool? It does, but it's currently not working, is it? I don't know, I think we need to give it another chance. I can't believe you have a beam engine. Okay. Shall we go and see if your engine blows up? Yeah. Do you, sorry, but this question about this. Yeah. Did you swap this? No. So you bought it swapped? Yes. Do you know who swapped it? No, actually. Do you know anything about the engine itself? Like, what they've done to it? No. Oh. That's probably why it's 16 grand then, I guess, right? Yeah. 
My temp gauge is fully, it's overheated, is what's happened. Were you not watching it? It was high the whole time, but it went past, it went past the uh, yellow uh, so at that point, so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think James's car has overheated. That's what's happened here. So we're just gonna let it sit for a little while. Absent doing a full side of the road engine diagnostic, Tofu's temperatures nearing the no-no zone was the only indication I had of an issue. So my new focus became cooling. Okay, onward. Can't believe James has a friggin' beams engine. I would have engine swapped this if I knew that's what we're doing. Resto mod. That thing's a little rocket though. That's gonna be really quick. James, did the problem come back or is everything working fine now? Everything looks good right now. I do have a renewed fear of throttle now though. But in order to help it, I've put all the heating to, to the hottest. I've got my windows open. So I'm gonna try and exhaust some of the heat out of the engine bay my way as well. But as soon as everything seemed like it was going fine and my temperatures were lower, the misfires and loss of power came back anyway. I don't care about the noise suddenly. I'm more worried about the heating. So as long as the temps stay low, I'm cruising, baby. Noise? That's just noise to me. Wrong metaphor. Maybe the correct terminology is, it's pretty noise in there. Uh-oh. Yeah, my engine's, it's not overheating right now, but I'm getting some stuttering. That's not a good sign. No. Yeah, it's, it's putting power. I'm losing revs again. The problem seemed to only be prevalent in fifth gear at low revs and high load. So I employed a strategy of dropping down to fourth gear and keeping the revs a bit higher. It worked perfectly, except it did slightly affect the amount of cabin noise. James, this landscape is absolutely stunning. Yeah. I said this landscape is absolutely stunning. I don't remember the last time I went running. Are those mountains coming up? Is that where we're going? I do believe it is. If you've ever been on a date in a loud restaurant and you just can't hear your date across the table, that's what this is right now. It's like a loud, one of those taco places that just blasts music. As we motored on towards the mountains, we noticed that an abnormally harsh and wet Arizona winter had resulted in a string of huge, wheel-destroying potholes on the road. It's like doing autocross at 100 kilometers an hour on a highway. Speaking of autocross, this car is the absolute first uh, image in my head of any form of autocross or auto solemn because one time we were driving near Toronto when I was just a kid and my dad pulled over and he sat me there for a while to watch the rabbits and I was like, what are you, what are you talking about dad? What are the rabbits? And he meant the rabbits. There was just a group of rabbits doing autocross. This must have been in like the early 90s. And I remember seeing them lift a rear wheel going around the corners and thought it was the coolest thing ever. After we escaped the potholes and topped up on fuel, we kept heading towards the mountain roads and the scenery kept uh, changing. Now this is getting really like Arizona out here, you know? Like, <laughs> um, it, I think it's usually lemonade in Canada, isn't it? Yeah. America's a weird place. It's a weird place. They also didn't look like there were enough stars on that flag to be the American flag. Yeah, yeah. Finally, the road started to get twisty. And this gave us a chance to see what a couple of lightweight 80s legends had to offer. All right.
right, so I know it's only eight valves, four cylinders, single overhead cam. It's not really that exciting of an engine. But you know what, it makes an angry little noise even though this is the stock exhaust. <laughs> Runs out of steam at the top, but it's fun. It's one of those flat out cars, right? You're just flat out all the time. It's not that quick. It's not. Yeah, this thing did, did, I don't know if it can still do, it did zero to 60 in like nine seconds. I know that seems slow and, it, well, it is slow, but at the time, a V8 Camaro was that speed. So imagine this little economical hatchback comes out of nowhere and it's just fun. It's small, it's light, it isn't cumbersome. Thankfully, the gear ratios are really, really short. So I just get to, just get to rev it out. I'm shifting all the time. Clutch spacing is really good too. Steering is unassisted. I feel like between these two cars, it seems like I've got torque and he has horsepower. Listen to this, Thomas. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. <laughs> It is a Beams. It stands for Breakthrough Engine with Advanced Mechanism System. So, it has smart things like variable valve timing. It's a bit like Honda's VTEC. But the way this has been modified, there's essentially no power below 5,000 RPM. Like nothing. There's a lot of intake noise, but I really kind of have to Drop it down into second. Oh. Wow! That is a f***ing sound. That's coming from a Corolla! Zona Mount Aquina right here. Your tofu is coming, sir! I'm on the way! The more we pushed our hatchbacks, the more faith we had in them. Eventually, we were flying. What a view! What a view! Tofu and schnitz! Through the mountains! Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a very stiff suspension. It's, it's on racing coilovers. Two little 80s hatchbacks playing in the mountains. I want to say on a sunny day, but it's not sunny. But you know what? That's okay. I mean, it's not that hot in here. I don't have air conditioning, and the engine's working real hard. Very neutral handling, actually. One of these on coilovers is freaking great. <laughs> I'm not even going that quick. That's the beauty of it. This is absolutely heaven. There's something to be said for chasing your best mate. the canyon in just two such thrilling cars. Downshift, second, straight into the Muy Tech. Oh, he's racing ahead. Little Schnitz doing what he can. But Tofu's bringing up the rear. Does it all the way home. That is so bloody fun. Lightweight. Lightweight is what it's all about. There's so much information coming from the front wheels. I just think at all costs, 
cars should be made lighter. Just let the low mass fix the problems. A lot of modern cars, they do everything they can to make it seem like you're in a light car. They make the steering light. A shorter steering ratio, so that it feels like you're turning in quicker. The suspension is taut, so that as you come round a corner, you don't really feel like you're in a 4,000 pound car. But this, at just over half the weight, doesn't have the electric assists or the special stuff, so I can feel all of its weight. So through my hands, and through the corner, it doesn't feel lighter until you introduce inertia and you take a corner harder and you realize the car is not straining to do it. It can just dart and be quick and change its position because it's not moving tons of weight. I'm getting quite a, uh, quite a, quite a, a loud oil alarm. I think I kind of want to check my oil. Let's do that right now. After I checked my oil using a uh, leaf because I couldn't find a rag and we helped a motorcyclist who had a bit of trouble, we were back on the road. And the canyon curves and the beautiful scenery just kept going. But we found ourselves suddenly quite peckish. So with stomachs rumbling, we stopped at the first mountain town that we came across, which clearly had no political leanings whatsoever. Yeah, none. And then we popped in for lunch at Bill's Grill, which we went to admittedly because it, it rhymed. Uh, and they had burgers, which were delicious. We ate quickly and got back on the road towards the mighty Sedona. And since I hadn't had that misfire or loss of power issue for a while, I thought it safe to cruise in a higher gear, which led me to accidentally discover something. Thomas? Yes? I think I might have a sixth gear. What do you mean you think you might have a sixth gear? Have you been... <laughs> Even though the A6 only has five gears, the, the beam swap, potentially this now has six, right? <laughs> yeah, that's very possible. All right, give it a go. Let's see if you have a sixth gear. <laughs> All right, that's third. That's fourth. That's fifth. Is it gonna break? That's sixth. Uh, yes, I, 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 do, I, do, I, do, I do have a sixth gear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've done like 200 miles and you didn't even know yet. I have to be honest, it's a bit quieter in here now. What an idiot! <laughs> Eventually, we stumbled upon a small town in the mountains, which for some reason looked like it was plucked out of the countryside in southern Europe. The road then turned a bit rough, and we found ourselves in some sort of car graveyard. Where the pavement ends, the Old West begins. Gold King Mine, what is this place? Oh, this is weird. Why am I off-roading? Soon enough, we found a place to stop and take in the weirdness, at which point I was about to discover something rather shocking about James's car that even he didn't know about. That was cool. Very cool. That was cool. Yeah, this place is spooky, man. This is weird. I I don't understand this part of the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hundreds of miles later. I actually don't feel too bad, you know? Like, yeah. I'm, like I'm like borderline refreshed. How about you? My ears are ringing a bit. <laughs> Everything else is fine. But this I, is, I've been looking at this for hours now and it is literally the coolest thing on the road I've right become now. so attached to it in just a day. Really? Yeah, like I already feel the things my parents did for me. Like I love it, I'm proud of it. <laughs> I don't mind its faults. <laughs> it can do no wrong. No, I really, really enjoy looking at this. Oh, I did, you, so you've done like the whole, like literally right to the, the, car, the, the anime cartoon, right? Ish. Well, first of all, those who have watched the anime cartoon will know that it doesn't start with a carbon fiber slash black Yeah, bonnet. he mods it over he the He mods thing. it. I think it's in the fourth stage. It, right. He gets a carbon fiber bonnet. If that's right. not the fourth stage, you can kill me. That's fine. If I uh, survive the this weave is, this is, is, it, is this carbon fiber hood? No, this is very much a wrapped black hood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I cheated a little bit. I didn't have much time, but, okay. the, but the detailer did a lot and, and he managed to get the, um, and, and, the, and the, the words thing. on the side. Yeah, what, what does it say again? It's like, it's like 
It's the name of the, I think it's the name of the place, that, that the tofu shop. like Fujiwara. Yeah, Fujiwara Tofu Cafe, and I think... I'm just going to Google, I'm just going to Google Translate it. I'm, I'm still curious. I've been staring at it all day, i got to know what it says. Oh, the app that shows you Yeah, the, the, app, the yeah. app, Google Translate, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really proud of how it came out. Uh, but, James? Yes? It says something in Japanese. No, I know, That's, it says the Fujiwara um, no, James. Tofu no, Cafe. No, it says something in Japanese. Right, yes. I feel like we're going... No, it says... It literally says something in Japanese. I think. What? <laughs> what is written on the side of your I car? That shouldn't have happened. I text him. Hang text on. Text who? The rap guy. Who did you? Who did the rap? Limitless raps. Oh, Limitless raps. They're, they're amazing. They. Hang he, on. He did. All, he did the rap on he my says, M3. What did it say? And I said something from the show. And then he said, "What in particular?" I said something in Japanese. I think. I see what's happened. <laughs> I thought. Did, did he? <laughs> he's obviously a very. He he's obviously a very literal man. Um, this says something in Japanese. Who's gonna know? <laughs> Who's gonna Anybody know? Anybody that can speak Japanese, James. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I've been driving for hundreds of. <laughs> <laughs> People have taken photos with this. Oh my god! Is it the same? I thought yes, it is. Okay. Well, obviously he's consistent. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. Well, this is. <laughs> This is this oh look this God, looks Christ. this looks dumb now. <laughs> this, this, this looks classic and simple and clean. Um, oh my god. I'm like that's gonna be a while for me to get over that. I really hope no one speaks Japanese. <laughs> I can't change it now. It's not like I've got spare letters oh hanging around. Um, okay. that's, that's it's true. That's right. That's, that's yeah. in English, yeah, you're fine on that one. Um, what does it mean though? I don't know. <laughs> you just Google Translate that. No, it's just a hatchback, maybe. I don't yeah. Know. Um, um, anyway. You've got black wheel wheels, not moving on. <laughs> moving on. You've got two black lines. There's a lot in common here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're both like from the, they both have, you know, similar styling cues, but from across, you know, a huge continent of distance. Of distance. What do you think about my interior? Because yours is gross. No, if it's I'm, not. It's lit. I'm sorry. I, I saw it. It's what is that? What is this? What is on the door? Something, Wait, something Japanese. I something think. Japanese, you think? <laughs> it's just a mess. What are you man. talking it's about? It's not that. The seats are okay condition. It's super comfortable. This, this is, it's well put together. That's really good, yeah. That has taken its vacation from the seat. <laughs> um, and then, hang on. I've got the shifter with the TRD. Yeah, yeah, that's I really think it's like cool. a Duracon material so it doesn't get hot or cold. Yeah, okay. I've got lumbar support. Sorry, what is that? You squeeze it. And that, a, so that like pumps up the lumbar. In a, perf in a perfect world, yes. It doesn't work, does it? N no. Okay. <laughs> I've got this console here with the. Oh, okay. That's why it's been rattling. That's okay. I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Those I'll... look like very important screws. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to keep them there. It's lovely and functional. It's lovely and functional. What more can you ask? It's a corona. You know what more you can ask for? You can ask for this. Also, hold on. Do look my doors my... open wider than yours? Mine opened to almost, not, oh wow, you're really wide. Yeah. Why is it so wide? Uh, it used to be one of those clown cars where they had to fit in and, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. No, but seriously though, look at this. Look at, look at my interior. You oh, could get this in a red. Absolutely love it. Right? Absolutely it's love it. so, they got the stitch on the dashboard, right? Yeah. It, so, it, it, fun fact about this actually, the car was designed by Giugiaro. Here he comes again. Yeah, here he comes. He, he always he, makes a cameo. He's done a lot of cars. But fun fact about this that I looked up, and I don't know if this is actually true. Actually, two fun facts. Ready? I'm going to hit you with them. Two fun almost facts. Two fun. No, well, yeah, I don't know if they're 100% true. That's but not I believe, fact, then. Well, I believe they are to be true. Anyway. Okay. So everyone always says that the circle headlight version of this is the better looking one, right? Yeah. But when Giugiaro originally sketched the car, he sketched it with square headlights. But for the Germans who made the car, they couldn't do it with square headlights. They had to have circle headlights for whatever their light laws were, right? Oh. But when it came over here and they made the rabbit, square headlights, Giugiaro's design. And the interior, they actually, I think one of the first women that was hired by Volkswagen in the era to design, and she did the entire interior of this. They wanted a lady's touch? It's a lady's touch. Uh, this steering wheel fascinates me. Why? Are these, are these all four They're horns? all horns. <laughs> Why don't, they, why don't they all make a different sound? I don't know. And I got my golf ball shifter. Yeah, and those uh, gauges. Yeah, so that that's an option. Uh, so that that's an option that's been ticked. And I believe that there's an option uh, in America for a, a window that opens, like my Alpha. A split that, like, window. This split window like pivots, right? Yeah. Which I don't have. Thankfully, it's freezing out here. I so said we come to Arizona. We come down here to get away from the cold, and it's like I've been pretty warm. It's been snowing a it's little been, bit. It's been exhausting the heat into the into the cabin. So what do you mean? 
well, I turned the heat all the way on so that the engine didn't overheat as much. <laughs> so I've been okay, quite warm. Good. Mine's just been sitting happily at halfway. That was, no. quite, that was quite scary at the beginning. Yeah? yeah. I, thought, I thought that was it at the very start. I thought it was it as well. You, I, you, you, you said you were stuttering. I was like, and he's stuttering. warped the block. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, I just want to... What's this? Oh. What's going on there? Uh, well, it was where the lock went. I can see that. Yeah, now yeah. it's just become sort of like a back alley circumcision machine. <laughs> I, uh, I don't, yeah. So technically, and this is gonna get fixed before anyone sees this video, this car can never lock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. You should do like a Mr. Bean thing, put a padlock on. <laughs> yeah. um, sorry, can, can we take a walk around this place before we go to our final destination? Because it's really weird and I want to see some stuff. Give me the shivers. And stuff there was. Spooky stuff, old stuff, rusty stuff, spiky stuff. We even found an entire American man. Where are you foreigners from? Canada. Where <laughs> are you foreigners from? Huh? Canada. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you're a foreigner. True. We absolutely. definitely are. Yeah. I've been a foreigner for 10 years. I'm English and I live in Canada. All right, there you yeah. go. How about these yokes? <laughs> also Canada. All right, okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're and then more abandoned cars. A dishonest medical worker. No! No! You're, you're a liar, man. You're a liar. And at the end, a gift shop, which drew us in with its fancy wares. I bought a knife with an eagle on it, just to be less foreign. We bought an elastic band revolver each for protection, took a photo with a fan, and then took one last look over the mountains before we set off. James, you know, this place is pretty weird, but like given the landscape and the stuff that we've seen, there's actually like nothing here that gives away that we're in America, right? No. no. Anyway, um, the sun is going down very soon and we want to get to Cathedral Rock, right? I remembered it as Crocodile Rock. There's no help for us. Time was short, and we wanted to make it to our destination of Cathedral Rock before sunset. Fortunately, the rocks reddened faster than the sky darkened. We had finally descended into Sedona. Okay, I can conclude that Sedona has one of the prettiest backdrops to a city, town, I've ever driven through. That is absolutely stunning in every direction, and it's all right there. It's so cool. It's like Banff, but red. Enamored as we were by the vermilion vantage points all around us, we were looking for one particular one that stood above the rest. And finally, in the distance, we spotted it. James, is that it? Well, I don't know what constitutes... I, it looks like a rock. It looks epic. Epic is right. And seeing as Cathedral Rock is considered a place of intense spirituality, it was a perfect first stop on our road to enlightenment. It was also an excellent place to end the first leg of our journey. It's even quite a fun road in. I like that it's like, it wants you to be enlightened, but also enjoy your last few moments. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, that is just so cool. Oh. Feeling my leg. My door has developed a situation. Yeah. Oh no. It's like coming off the car. Yeah. So I have to fix that later. So you gotta it's almost like, like really... a gull wing. Almost like a gull wing door. <laughs> Unintentional gull wing door. James. Yeah. We've made it. Cathedral Rock. There it is. Why is it called that? Um, well, it's because in 1864, the settlers came and they were uh, uh, known for their Gothic architecture and they built small uh, buildings all around. I have no idea, actually. I'm just oh. uh, completely zero idea why it's I called. I thought it was like Quasimodo rings the bells there or Maybe. something. Maybe. We, we came here for a sunset. I don't think that's going to happen. It's raining in the desert. <laughs> that was a long day, actually. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, I don't know, I started at 5 a.m. and uh, been driving a coil overed <laughs> modded, missing a hole in the insulation between the engine and the cabin 
Corolla. My left foot is actually quite sore because my clutch pedal is like the size of a toonie. Oh, oh what's a... We're in America. What's a toonie? What's a toonie-sized object? Quarter. A quarter. quarter. It's the size quarter. of a quarter. quarter. And that, it hurts to push. Anyway. Let's go. Okay. I want a boss. <laughs> I want a beer. As we headed to our lodgings, weary from hundreds of miles of highways, canyons, and loud 80s sports cars, we realized that today was the perfect start to our adventure. Although we didn't feel entirely enlightened yet, in making it to Sedona, Tofu and Schnitz had begun to prove their worth, and we were already becoming quite fond of them. Unfortunately, today would prove to be the easiest and smoothest leg of the journey by a long shot. On the next episode of The Road to Enlightenment, I find out something surprising about James's car. It was how much? Which sets off a series of events that leads us to have one of the longest and most epic days of our lives. Stay tuned. Oh, nice, that's a cool boot mechanism. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah, how do you open yours? Two-man job. Is that um, why you're waiting there sheepishly beside it? I was being polite. Ready? So you... Open it in three, two, one, go. What do I have to do? Oh, you, you have to pull... You haven't pull, told me anything. Pull the boot open as I, as I do the button. Ready? Okay. Go. There we go. Aha! Uh -huh. It's stiff, but you haven't got those. I don't, yeah, I do, I have one, it works perfectly. One. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go to bed now. Ugh. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, fair enough. This is Garage Girls here. This is pretty cool. It's Garage Girls. This is pretty cool. This is a cool place. Very cool place. Auto tempers, baby. <laughs> <laughs>